uh, we have people from Sierra Leone. We have people from Uganda. And then we have uh, Mzadik Khan from Canada. Mzadik, if you hear me and if you see something on the screen, please write something so I can make sure you're in. Okay, it's in. Cool. And I'm sure you, you have all the information so far. So we'll be starting in the next two minutes. I want everybody to have a pen and paper. And uh, this webinar will, is recorded. So in case you miss it, or, or you want to make any reference, you can come back tomorrow. We'll be able to send out the link, okay? So the whole thing is about uh, mindset transformation. Uh, as all of you know, we are in the 21st century now, and things are changing very, very fast. And if we don't change, we'll be washed away. So, as I said, I'll be starting the next two minutes. Just make sure you have a glass of water around you. You make sure you have done with the washroom, so you don't want to miss it. It's going to be hot. So make sure you fasten your city belt and make sure all your guys, Jacinta in Uganda, make sure all your guys are there, at least watching and listening something because this is going to be mind blowing, okay? So Jacinta, if you are there, uh, if you can just say hi to, to people, let me see if I can unmute Jacinta. Uh, Jacinta, can you say something? Okay then, so maybe later on, I'll be able to let you guys speak something. Uh, now, let us start now. Uh, as I said, good evening everybody, and Jumbo, and Mambo, and Habaligani, this is our greetings in Africa. As I said, we have people from all over. Uh, my name is on the screen. The whole thing about this session is to help each other to see how we can transform ourselves and let alone help our brothers and sisters to change their lives. Okay? So, as, of, as you can understand now, we are in the 21st century and uh, things are changing very fast. We are no longer in the industrial age where things used to take like 60 years to change, but nowadays, Within 96 days, things are changing very fast. This is what I came out recently, uh, that uh, the richest people in the world are now wealthier than the rest of the world. This is by Oxfam. It means people are becoming richer and richer while the majority of people are suffering. And why this is happening? Where are they coming from? Do they come from a different Earth, or is it the same world? Or they are from Mars, or they are from the Moon, whatever. But uh, while this is happening, and people are wondering what's happening, jobs have been taken away, people are being retrenched. There's all kinds of challenges in the world. But these guys, they are becoming richer and richer day after day. And why this is happening? You can see on the screen. You have uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook. You have this lady, uh, Sarah Blakeway. You see, she could not even make it when she wanted to become a lawyer. She went to a law school, but she did uh, the test. Because before, before you sit for the exam, you need to, to, before you take the law, you have to sit for an exam, and she could not make it. She tried twice, thrice, and later on, she ended up becoming a billionaire. She was rejected several times, but she made it. The other guy is the richest man in China, Alibaba. This is his company. And if you can just go through his story, you'll be shocked. The issue is, 
where are they this people coming from where are they coming from and why the rest of the people are struggling you have this guy from nigeria aliko dangote he's now spanning the globe it's almost everywhere but uh as far as i know each one of these guys they were born like everybody of us but how did they manage to make it why are they becoming worth a day after day and the rest of the people are suffering my friends my brothers and sisters this is the kind of questions we need to ask ourselves what's wrong with the rest of the people are they too much blessed they are all of us who are made from the image of god but how come they are doing a lot and are still doing it and the rest are just suffering this is what is happening uh, that one percent and the rest of 99 percent are just struggling uh, you find people fighting with their employers seeking for more salary are you among the 99 percent or you want to be in one percent so the whole session is based here it's just a mindset transformation you need to think differently what used to be normal is no longer normal okay so you need to understand that i don't want my children to end up in this 99 percent i don't want to die in 99 percent and uh, if that's the case what do we need to do now everybody wants to change the world but nobody wants to change everybody want to change the world but nobody wants to change it's very simple to do something at once but it's very difficult to do it over and over and over again so this is the kind of questions we need to ask ourselves throughout of these sessions if that the case things happen for a reason and sometimes change is inevitable my friends and sometimes it can be very terrifying but uh, when we embrace it whatever stuff we have in our mind and it takes a lot of stuff to make it to go through it so whether we like it or not think of the population in east africa or in africa in general Africa has been blessed. It has all the stuff, and most of the stuff that's on the ground. But people are just fighting, fighting, fighting. When this thing is going to end? Think of what has happened to our neighbor countries. Almost everywhere in Africa, people are killing each other, fighting for what is in the ground. What's the problem now? Uh, is it a curse from God, or there's something wrong with us? So, my brothers and sisters, if we want to do something on this earth we better start changing ourselves as i said it's very difficult to change but that's the only way to go about i don't know if some of you have read this book who moved my cheese it's a very very interesting book so i would advise some of you guys who haven't read this book make sure you get it and especially if you are in school or you are employed once you read this book i'm sure you won't be the same person again i read this book in 2000 and 2000 yes that's when i read it and it really really changed my thinking it's a very simple book you can finish it within a within a day but uh, it helps you to go through about change as i said the change is inevitable and that's the only way we can change our life. So you guys, as you can see on the screen, uh, it's not easy, it's not easy, but, but, you better be the one. As I said, it's not easy, but it's worth if you make it. And while that is happening, I'm sure, some people will think you are crazy you see and uh, all of us we are born or we are created in the image of god and see this picture here we have all the sheep around and there's only one in the middle and that is you 
because as you hear me now talking thank god that uh, you are still there breathing because most of the guys have gone and uh, why are we still alive why are you listening to me now there is something in you but you better find it so if if we really want to change this world the only change we can do is to start with ourselves and uh, as a reminder as a reminder we have a pool of people around there that 99 percent i was talking about you better run away from them think differently think differently change your friends change the way you do things you need to challenge almost everything around you that's the only way you can change otherwise people won't be able to separate you from the pool you have seen as you have seen on the on the previous screen so my friend my brother and sisters as Mahatma Gandhi put it we must become the change we wish to see in the world and uh, if that's the case it means everything within us have to change and once that things happen everything around us whether it's in income health wise relationship wherever whatever you name it it's gonna change it's gonna fall for you so as you can understand always talk to people if you are surrounded with people who are very successful automatically automatically you will be able to reach a certain level uh, as Les Brown keep saying shoot for the moon even if you miss it you land among the stars so if you want to change you need to become that person now and this is the most difficult thing to do we believe that uh, all of us are gifted we have talent in us but if we don't develop those talents nothing gonna happen so to become that person you need to sit now you see this is the beginning of the year you have set all the goals i want this i want that last year i didn't uh, achieve this and that but uh, see yourself as a success pattern you see and this is very difficult can you turn off your tv can you stay away of all kind of where you waste your time think of the way you spend your 24 hours we have 24 hours in a day and how do we use it so if you don't become that person if you don't start with the end you need to see yourself see yourself like you're 60 or you're 80 or maybe you have one or two days to go god may call you out so see that person in you now walk like a, a successful person other than as a victim so this is the first process for whatever change you are thinking for whatever life you are thinking start living it now you know life is so so short you see so there is no tomorrow <laughs> yesterday is gone but most of the time we find ourselves thinking of the past so you need to become that person thank god for everything whatever is happening to you but the issue is you need to work on it it won't just all happen overnight it is a process it's a process and it's an it doesn't end it doesn't end and once you become that person whatever you are thinking whatever you are thinking and you need to take action they say this is a law there's no way you can reap without sowing every action there is equal and opposite reaction i'm sure you remember your physics see? you see so you guys take action and when is the action is in place it's very tough some people try once some try twice and if it doesn't happen they just quit think of thomas edson when he was trying to invent the electric bulb he tried 10,000 times before the bulb went on so how many times have you tried to do whatever you want to do yourself was it by pressure from somebody else or it was just your inside talk you know most of the time we have this self-talk inside of us that i can do this i can do this but once you start doing it and then you start doubting yourself you see 
So this is where separates people who go through and those who can't make it. You know, action, action, action. Think of, I'm talking to you now, but uh, I managed to be talking to you because I came in walking and because of the friction, that's why I managed to be here. Otherwise, there's no way I could have been talking to you now because, you know, there is action. It's tough, yes, but that's how champions are made. You can't become a champion just sitting in a gym or whatever. You need to go out there and do something. So once you do, uh, the rest, which is the results, just will come automatically. You know what? You know what? Most of the time, you find people praying, God help us, God help me. You know what? If we are doing something which is within our reach, normally we don't even think of God. But whenever there is something which is beyond our reach, that's when we ask help from God. You guys, if you do those small, small stuff, your life will be the same like everybody else. And uh, you have no control with the outcome. But once you do the right thing, automatically, garbage in, garbage out. The more effort you put in, if it's the right thing, uh, the results will come automatically. So think of uh, in Africa and in the world in general, people are there struggling, looking for money. Eh? They work for many hours, hoping one day, one day, by working two, three jobs, one day I'll become a successful person or I'll become rich, whatever. My friend, is that simple? Is that simple? We have done this. Uh, I've, I worked for 10 years myself, day in, day out. I could not go for vacation for 10 years, but where did I end up? I'm sure you are familiar with this kind of work. So this is the universal law. This is the universal law. Unfortunately, in school, what they teach us, once I do have a job, let alone my life will change. I have Save, I'll do this and that, it doesn't work. So become that person first. Do the right thing, no matter how long it takes. Think of this, uh, the so-called Chinese bamboo tree. The guy planted a seed, it took five years. First year, nothing came out. Second year, nothing came out. But the guy kept watering, watering, watering. On fifth year, that's when the germination took place. And then six weeks later, the bamboo tree went up 90 feet high. You can understand how it takes five years for the bamboo tree to reach 90 feet. You can understand this. So it's a process. And most of the time, people will look, look at you and say, is he crazy? Because most of the time we want to look like everybody else, but it won't work. So if that's the case now, why this is happening now? Uh, third world countries, Africa in general, I don't know why we are still struggling. This is the late Mandela. Eh? He said the poverty is not an accident, like slavery and apartheid. It is a man-made and can be removed by the actions of human beings. So what can we do in order to get rid of this poverty? Wherever you go, poverty, poverty, poverty. What, what is missing in us? Right? Because of our color? Because they call Africa a dark continent? What is happening? But we have a little dangote, it's in Africa. Right? In TZ here, we have this uh, uh, Mohammed Enterprise, we have Salim Baresa, and everywhere. You guys, what is missing now? What's wrong with our education system? Because we go to school, how many years in school? Let's count all together. Eh? You have seven years in primary school. I'm sure that's the standard one in Africa. If it's not eight, if it's not seven, it's eight years. But you have four years for secondary education. We have another two years for high school. You have three or four years for university. If you total this, it's like 17 years in school. And how many people are on the street jobless? Go to Nigeria. Eh? Go to East Africa. You know, it's a crazy idea. You know, those back then, people used to complain, oh, 
you know, in Tanzania, you know, the Kenyans are coming, the Ugandan are coming. You know, this is the global thing. Uh, you have go well, everywhere. You find people. Uh, the issue is, are we willing to either to compete with them or uh, want to do whatever we want to do? What's wrong with the education system? At one time, uh, I went to the University of Dar es Salaam, and uh, I was introduced to one guy who was the head of our entrepreneurial department. My concern was I wanted to know how many students they have produced who are pursuing entrepreneurship. So he said many. And I asked him, where are they? He said, most of them are employed. And then I asked him, why are they employed? He said, we don't know why, because we have been teaching them entrepreneurship. I said, okay, so why don't you find out? Oh, we are still waiting for donors to give us money so we can go out and ask them. I said, who is teaching these guys? He said, us. And then I asked, you know what? Entrepreneurship is not theory. It's something which, if you are teaching him about entrepreneurship, what have you done yourself? You see? So I asked the guy, how successful are you? The guy looked at me with a bad face and said, okay, I'm in trouble here now. He said, you know what? That's where something is missing. I asked him, have you invited anybody from Tanzania or from Dar es Salaam? where the college was. And uh, he said, uh, no. I said, why? I said, well, that's where the problem is. So you can see what they're teaching people. And I came in an article here in Tanzania, 61% of the job seeker, you can't even employ them. They don't have the skills needed. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we go to school to study what the employer want. Uh, we have this thing, uh, they call it, uh, if you don't have money, then the government will give you a loan to start and all kind of. But sometimes the government money comes with condition that uh, we're going to pay your school fees provided you start education. So they want you to be a teacher. But uh, is something which you wanted in, in your life? Or sometimes, yes, our parents, they force us to start what they want us to start. My friend, you were born for a purpose. Uh, God used your parents. It's like a, when you want to go somewhere, you, are, you pass through a bridge. So your parents was just was like a bridge. God used them to bring you here. But uh, they should not impose anything on you because God is the one who brought you with a specific purpose. So I'm sure there's something wrong with the education system. And uh, this is what Albert Einstein said. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. You know what? This notion, go to school, study hard, get good grade, find a job, work hard, 40 years, 60 years, and maybe die, whatever. So you find that it's a, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. You see? Going there, doing this, and then you end up earning what? So with that notion, let me just share with you something here, that uh, we have to change. If we don't change, nothing, nothing so ever going to happen. Let's hear from this guy. He's talking about, about change and how we can use our mind in the right way. So I'm inviting uh, Darren Hardy. He has a good message for you. And later, maybe I'll go through about it. But just listen to him and see if you can get something out of it. This is your mind, okay? Imagine it just like an empty glass. It'll hold whatever you put in it, right? You could put cyanide in here and it'll hold it. You could put mother's breast milk in here and it will hold it. It doesn't filter it. It doesn't judge it, right? It just simply holds it. That's what your mind does, okay? So let's imagine this is your mind. And let's say that you pour into your mind something as nasty as dangerous as something like this, okay? You turn on CNN, you turn on Fox News, you listen to gossip, you watch reality TV, the housewives of wherever, right? And you just pour this negative, lewd, scandalous, corrupt, stupid, inane stuff into your brain. Now you can see 
that if your mind is cluttered with negative, dark, dirty, worrisome, fearful, fearful messages, all you can do is see the world as dark, dirty, scandalous, lewd, and ridiculous, right? Because that's the lens that your eyes now see through the color of your mind. Now, what do you do if you have all this negative, dark, fearsome, worrisome content in your mind? Well, just like a dirty glass, the only thing that you can do is flush it. So, if you were to take clean, clear water, and let's say that this clean, clear water are messages of hope, messages of positivity, messages of abundance, messages of, me messages of prosperity, right? The kind of content that you're watching and listening to right now, the stuff that you see inside of Success Magazine, on the CDs that go into our magazine, the stuff that you see in the Success Store, all these messages of positive instruction and hope and what's possible and doing great things and overcoming obstacles. Now, we have this negative, fearful, dangerous corruption in our mind. All you can do is flush it. And just like a glass that you flush with clean, clear water, if you keep flushing it and you keep flushing it and you keep flushing it, over time, eventually, you will end up with a glass or a mind of clean, clear, hopeful, abundant-based feelings, messages, and centeredness. Yeah, I'm sure you got something out of this video. And I have you seen a, it's a process. It's a process. Uh, it's like a, you're having a knife. Uh, you're using a knife in the kitchen. And from, because you've used it for some time now, it doesn't work properly. So what do you do? You sharpen it. So how do you sharpen your mind? How do you sharpen your mind? And this is the kind of questions we need to ask ourselves. But unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, the, system, the system has something for us already. You know, I don't have a problem with education, but the issue is what kind of education are we being given? And most of the people, most of you guys who are listening to me now, I'm sure the school you went to, somebody, either your parents or your government or wherever, lecturers or teachers, they told you, you are better on this, do this, do that, do that. And we listen to them. And what happens? And well, uh, this guy, uh, Thomas Edson, whatever, he didn't even go to school. He stayed in school for three years, and then he came out and invented a thousand plus stuff. What are we learning from all this thing here? So if, if this is what you want, how come now most of the people are in poverty? The people are just struggling. Eh? Whatever salary they are paying you is just to make you survive. And uh, so this is what happens. So we have all our brother and sister. They're still going around, running from here to there, hoping that one day, one day they make it. If this is the solution, if this is the solution, Africa could have been somewhere else. You know, the population is rising, and there is no jobs. As, as we speak, in some places in this world, either the technology has taken over jobs or animals. You go to Japan, you go to Thailand, you find monkeys doing the human jobs. So this is the kind of thing you need to learn. So anytime, even if you have a job now, anytime you can lose it. There are this they call mega and acquisition. Your company may be bought. Recently, we have this company here in Tanzania. Uh, it's called Zantari. It has been bought with another company. And uh, all the employees have been told that uh, they are going to be retrenched. Think about that. So you have no control on this. So you went to school very well, yes, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So even if you find a good job, guess what? You don't win once in a while. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all the time. Winning is a habit. So even if you find a job, unless you still, we have a new president in Tanzania. 
and some of the guys uh, from the Tanzania Revenue Authority and other institutions, they have lost their jobs. And this is just the beginning. The issue is, it's just a matter of time how far this thing will go. So you need to understand that uh, in order for us to change our lives, we need to find the right way, as uh, Sir Richard Branson put it. You don't learn to walk by following rules. You learn by doing and by falling over. You know, these rules, go to school, get good grade, find the job, there is this security, there's that and that, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. The guy you show on the screen, you know what? He doesn't have a proper education, as you can call it, but the guy is damn rich. He has over 300 and something companies. And uh, people didn't even imagine that he could make it, but uh, he made it and they're still making it. So the other thing people can do, once we have these, uh, the so-called uh, certificates, I have degree of this and that, what you do sometimes we go out and open up our own businesses. It's well and good, but the issue is you are doing on your own. Most of the people who are self-employed, they're just, it's like a, you own a job and this is the situation. Think of, we have seen so many people who had uh, businesses and the day they died, that was the end of the business. The no system is the one who knows everything. So I don't have a problem with this, but the issue is you won't accomplish much. And if the matter is just to survive, yes. If the matter is just to make some few money, yes. But the issue is, the issue is, are we doing it to help other people or we are doing it just to make profit? Most of the small business we have come across, they are just there to make money. Oh, what's a sad thing to happen in your life? You know, we should not work for money. Money should work for us. But all, most of the small businesses, people are busy, 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 busy. But are we productive? So you can make money here and there. Because it's a small thing. It's just a family thing. Or you just have few employees. But you are the one who is making the money most of the time. But the day you die, I'm sure your business also may go with you. And uh, I'm the product of that. I came from a family where my dad had a business. And then some crazy people came and they killed him. Two years later, we just ran out of money. So I know how painful this thing can be. But uh, the issue is, if you are doing these small businesses, do you have a system to take you through? And uh, most of the guys who do this stuff, they won't even get this up. But, uh, you know, think of, we have people going to India, going to Europe for medical checkup, and then later on you hear that, oh, he died, whatever. And then you have spent so many years building up your business, and then from nowhere now, the business is dying with you. So with this kind of small businesses, you know what's going to happen? You may increase your bank balance, but you need to find a way how you can save money. You need to find a way how you can save money. The red Zig Ziglar put it properly. He said uh, you can have everything you want in life if you can just help enough other people get what they want. And uh, with this kind of small businesses, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to touch many people. Yes, those few, yes, but the majority, it won't. So most of the small businesses, that's how they operate. What they miss out, they miss out uh, the entrepreneurship. You know, I may be having a business here, but I'm not, I may not be an entrepreneur. So let me take you through what, what, who is an entrepreneur and what does it take to be successful in business. Uh, for some of you who want to become successful in business. You need to understand what kind of person are you. There are three types of people. And the first is what I call technician. Technician is the person who has the skills for that, like doctors, right, medical doctors, engineers. You know, they are good on that. But uh, when it comes to business and you're a technician, 
Uh, that's what we call entrepreneurship shizia. Because you went to school, you have this kind of thing, you think you have the skill to run a successful business. This is a quite different, my friend. So a technician is a technician, and then the second person, as far as the business is concerned, is what we call manager. A manager means he manages a system. Think of a bank manager, whatever. So there are some people, they just sit there, right? they micromanage their businesses, hoping, because I don't want people to steal from me, yeah, my wife is my assistant, and my children are what and what. So they just walk around, walk around, walk around. So you need to understand, if you want to do business, you need to understand, are you a technician? Are you a manager? Or are you an entrepreneur? The entrepreneurs are the ones who start something from zero, out of nothing. Yeah? They are willing to go hungry. Sometimes they don't even sleep at all. Think of, there was this guy called, uh, he's still alive, this uh, 50 Cent. At one time, this guy was uh, making his movie and soundtrack for that movie. He could not sleep for three days, it's in a row. So they asked him, uh, 50 Cent, how did you manage to go through? I better ask you to find the story about 50 Cent. And the guy said, you know what? Sleeping is reserved for broke people. So this is the word of entrepreneur. Think of uh, Jesus Christ and uh, Prophet Muhammad. Jesus Christ died a long time ago. And how many churches are there? He, he got only 12 disciples, only 12 people. He got 12 people. He told them about Christianity. But how many are they now in the world? They are billions, right? So this is the kind of entrepreneur I'm talking about. So Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, all these people are entrepreneurs. You know, you open something, once it is running, because it, there is a system, once it is running, you step out, you open up something else. Once it's running, you step out. This is what Aliko Dangote and others are doing in the world. So you need to understand, it's not a matter of jumping in business. You need to be careful. Otherwise, my friend, along the way you'll be eaten, because the world has changed now. So my talk here throughout, I'll be trying to show you how you can become an entrepreneur yourself and what does it take. That's why I said it's a mind transformation. I can't change you, but I can transform you. The change is within yourself. If you want to change, definitely. But I can transform you. That's why I'm sharing with you something here. So once you become an entrepreneur, let alone, you can find yourself owning a big, a big, a big company. When I'm talking about a big company, it means you have hundreds and hundreds of people working for you. So Forbes magazine came out with uh, what does it take to make a big company. They come out with a definition. They said a big company is the one that have at least 500 or more employees. So with a big company, it means you own a system. So you have either product or services, but you have people, you have somebody as a manager working under you. So in doing so now, how can we become a big business owner? Oh, my friend, this is a, it's another very challenging thing. Under normal circumstances, you need to have enough money out there. You need to pay for your office, you need to pay to, to the revenue authority. Normally, you, do, you pay in advance before even you start your company. And that's where most people are stuck. If you talk most of our graduates, they say, you know what? I don't have money. I wish I had the money. And you ask them, how much money do you want? Um, a, a lot of money. How much do you want? They don't have any plan. It's just talk, 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 talk. So the issue here is not money. The issue is to have the business skills. You need to master how to, to deal with people, you see? So apart from that, let me share with you uh, something which can really help you with this center we are in. Uh, normally, this is what we know, all of us. When you buy something from a retailer or a supermarket, whatever, normally it goes through a process. It has been imported from maybe China, and then it comes through the wholesaler, 
and then through marketing and advertisement and then you have sales force around and then you have a retail shop so we're going by from the retail shop so you find all these people in between they have made money and uh, almost 85 percent of the distribution cost goes on on you and you find only the production cost is only 15 percent so you find uh, we end up paying much unnecessarily this is the model we are used to but uh, there's another model we can use and i want to warn you this is from richard de branson i'm warning you because uh, you need to be very attentive and understand what i'm talking here Richard Blanson says, uh, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity and you are not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. What I'm going to share with you is not like it's something new. It's something which we've been doing throughout our life. But unfortunately, we have no idea that we could have made money out of it. You know, all of us were born uh, networkers. As I speak to you now, I'm sure you have your telephone with you around. Let me ask you, from morning up to this hour, how many messages have you forwarded to your friends? Uh, the webinar you are watching, you got a message from somebody, right? So we do this thing every day. So there is a model. There is a model. Uh, the model is called uh, recommendation marketing, but uh, in other words, other people call it network marketing or direct selling. Uh, this is not something which is new, but uh, what you are going to see here is just that uh, for whatever you have been doing, somebody going to pay you money for that. So instead of buying from a retailer, this model works. You buy direct from the source. So it means we cut down all the middlemen around. So this is what is transforming the world. Whoever is on this webinar, you need to listen to this. Why should I go and buy something from a retailer who has added something on it? And why I should not buy direct from the source? So this is is what they call uh, the business of the 21st century. Why? Because the playing field has been leveled. Whether you have money, you don't have money, you have education, you don't have education, you have time, you don't have time, is something which you can do. We do this every day, but we don't understand about it. Think of, I'm sure you have friends around. Think of your friends when you are in primary school. Think of your friend when you're in secondary school or when you're in college. Where are they now? But you know them. Assume wherever they are, you could be making money from them. How much money could be going into your bank account every month? Because they have their friends, you see? So this is how the model works. And uh, why do I recommend this? I've mentioned about it, that uh, it, the playing field has been leveled. But the good thing, I came up with uh, Robert Kiyosaki. I'm sure you have heard of Robert Kiyosaki, but uh, let me remind you about what Kiyosaki has been sharing with people throughout the world about this model. The guy is very successful, but uh, let us hear from the horse's mouth. Probably you can learn something out of it. Now enjoy the talk from Robert Kiyosaki. No big deal. Talk to people about why network marketing is such a good entrepreneurial decision in the crazy landscape uh, that we deal with in today's economy? Well, as we know, there's fewer and fewer jobs. You know, American corporations say they're hiring, but they're not hiring in America, they're hiring overseas. But more than that is that the reason I endorse network marketing is most people are addicted to the paycheck. And the paycheck is one of the most sinister plots ever pulled upon a human being. If you need a paycheck, you've sold your soul. You know, you sold your body, your mind, your spirit, and your emotions. You sit there in fear of losing your job or 
can I get a raise or you know will I get promoted I mean and then and then why would you do that another thing about reason we, we endorse network marketing we don't think of it as a network marketing we think of it as entrepreneur development because if you need a paycheck this is not your business you know we build businesses so sometimes when Kim and I do a deal, we, we may not receive a paycheck for five, six years. You know, and so these guys come, oh, and we're going to get rich quick. You know, and some people do. I don't know if you do or not. But that is an employee, get rich, loser mindset. And so the thing that network marketing does is really kind of cure you of that loser paycheck, get rich quick mentality and actually build a business. You know, we build businesses. Well, and that's how we're rich, but we didn't get rich quick, and I don't need a paycheck. I never want a paycheck. So that's kind of a revolutionary thought to most people up there who went to school to get good grades and get a job. You know, they get a high-paying job, and the, the higher-paying job, you, you pay higher taxes. And you wonder why you never get ahead. That's because you went to school to get a job and a paycheck. You've got to get away from the paycheck. And sometimes it might take two, three years to get away from that. And that's what network marketing teaches people. It's an entrepreneur's mindset. It's an entrepreneur's spirit, not a loser employee. I need a paycheck mentality. I love that. I love that, the fact of uh, the paycheck being evil. It's evil. Well, just look at the tax system. Just the people that have, pay, have paychecks pay the highest taxes. Now, why would you do that? Well, if you had a little financial education, you had a business, the tax laws swing to your favor immediately. You, if you, you, have, you have a full-time job, we're not saying quit your job. Keep a full-time job, you know. Then start a part-time business. And then call your accountant. Because the moment you start a part-time business, the tax laws shift to your favor. So all of these guys who are crying the blues, I'm paying too much in taxes because you're a loser. You're working for a paycheck. Get it? You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't want a paycheck. What you want is passive income, you know. You want income that comes from assets, not from labor. It's a very different mindset. So if you want to get rich quick, that's a bad mindset. Yeah. You know, you know the terrible the mindset. The thing, too, about that entrepreneurial mindset is because I see a lot of people and their, their, their comment is, I don't, have en I don't have any money. I can't do this because I don't have money. I can't invest because I don't have any money. I can't build a business because I don't have any money. Yet... By not having money, because when we started out, we when we started. Oh, out, I was business, down eight hundred twenty thousand yeah. bucks. You know, what I mean, that's a lot of money to most people. My friend Donald Trump was down a billion. Didn't stop us. We yeah, just keep going. And that's the point. We we didn't have money to start a business. We didn't have money to invest, but it didn't stop us, and we kept figuring it out. And because of that, <laughs> it made us smarter. It made us more creative. We had to figure out how to get the money. We had to figure out how to sell ourselves and and sell our ideas. I mean, not having the money actually was a benefit. But so many people are afraid of not having money that they don't take that. And the, and the very skills it takes to be a great entrepreneur is required in network marketing. You've got, you start with nothing. You're asking people to work for no paycheck. And you have to build a business. Your hardest task in network marketing is taking that loser and a paycheck mentality and transforming it. If you can do that, you'll be successful. Not saying it's easy, but that is your job. And the reason Kim and I endorse network marketing is because unemployment keeps going through the roof, wages keep coming down, and we keep saying to our kids, go to school, get a paycheck. I mean, we're, we're killing our kids that way. We're killing their spirit. You need a paycheck. Every time you take a paycheck, you sell your soul, you sell your mind, you sell your emotions, you sell your body. And your time. And your time. Well, same thing. But anyway. That's why we endorse it. And for America to go back to prosperity or the world to go back to prosperity, we need more entrepreneurs. We don't need any more employees. Get it? You actually, <laughs> you actually sell your freedom. Yeah. You sell your freedom. When yeah, you that's the biggest part. That people that. talk about financial freedom. They don't know what it's like to not need a paycheck. The moment you don't need a paycheck, you're free. And then people say, well, what if you lose everything? Well, we didn't have anything at the start. We can make it back again. It's about the skills, isn't it? Because it's like, like you say, it's 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 not about having resources no. or money or investment to start. It's about being resourceful. It's about right. you find a way. As an entrepreneur, you find a way. You don't have enough money to to get your inventory. You find a way. You you solve that problem. You don't have this or that. You just find a way. Like when you're eight hundred thousand in debt, 
he found a way. When Donald Trump was a billion dollars in debt, he found a way, right, you know? Right. It's um, the skills, it's the confidence, it's the self-assuredness, um, all of that. So it, it just really kind of cracks me up. I mean, it's not funny, but it's kind of cruel, but it's also funny. You know, you go, why would you sell your soul for a paycheck? When you can pay tax, <laughs> that makes sense. If you build a business, you make more money and don't pay tax. But it takes time, and once you have it, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn how to build a business, you're not afraid of losing the business anymore. Because if you take it away, you, you'll do it again. It's like with a bicycle, you fall down, get back up. But people have never fallen down, never rode a bicycle, never learned to walk. You're always afraid of losing that paycheck. That's you sold your soul. Yeah. So one, working together is amazing. Uh, two, with what's going on in the world, working for a paycheck is is uh, it's insane. Is is a bad game. It's a bad. It's an old decision. idea. It's an old old idea. The I, you know, employees are industrial age ideas. And I wrote that book. This is the twenty first century. This is the twenty first century. Is your entrepreneurs? You build business, and you work for passive income, not you know, what do you call that? Paycheck income. Paycheck income. Yeah, we got to come up with some nasty name for that. No, it's called it's called ordinary income. Ordinary. There's three kinds of income: ordinary, portfolio, and passive. And employees work for ordinary. When you save money, that's ordinary income. When you invest in a 401k, it's ordinary income. You're the biggest losers. I mean, they teach you to be the biggest losers. Go to school, get a job, work hard for ordinary income, save money, ordinary income, and invest in a 401k. Ordinary income. You got to be nuts. And, and when and when you're building a your network marketing business, you are working for passive income because you're. And, and once I got that idea of getting, changing my mindset from focusing on ordinary income on my the paycheck and income coming in from from work to passive income, that made all the difference. And the government the gives you tax incentives for passive income because you're doing what the government wants you to do, like provide jobs and we build houses, and we also invest in oil wells. We need oil. But if you put your money in a savings account and a 401k, they tax you. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sure you got something out of this. Maybe just a recap of it. Uh, most of the time we struggle about money, 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 money. Uh, you find people who have jobs, and uh, if they don't get enough money, what they do, they go back to school. They think uh, when they come out with certificates, uh, they will get like a sort of increment. Even if they uh, increase your salary, that's just peanut, peanut. You know, you are waiting for money. Uh, if that was the case, uh, you are listening to me now. If it happens that uh, you are given uh, like 200,000 USA dollar, or Let's talk maybe 500,000 USA dollar in Tanzanian money that is over a billion. What are you going to do with it? The issue is the money or the issue is what is in your head. And I'm sure even if they give you 500,000 USA dollar, that is a billion Tanzanian shillings. And after a year, if they ask you to come back and ask you where did you take the money, most of, of us we find we have lost all the money. So if that was the case, how come now you have lost all the money? So the issue here is the, the skills. Have you grown enough to keep the money, to attract wealth? Because if you don't have the skills, if you don't have the skills, no matter how much money you have at hand, the money will disappear. So the issue here, you need to understand, you need to become that person first. And once you become a, a, an attractive person, a valuable person, the money will come back to you, even if you lose it. That's why he was talking about, uh, he was in debt himself. Uh, Donald Trump was in debt for over two, two billion US dollar, but the guy made it again. He used other people's money. So the issue here is not the issue of going back to school. If that was the case, maybe Aliko Dangote and others, they could have PhD, they are professors and what what. The issue, my friends, is not the certificates. If the issue is certificate, I think you have more than what is needed. I'm sure you have a driving license, you have birth certificate, you have your school certificates, you have all kinds of 
stuff right there. But those are just piece of paper. And when you go to the bank, I have never seen any bank asking for school grades or bring your certificate in the bank so they can give you a loan. What the bank will ask you, do you have your financial statement with you? They don't even ask, do you know how to write? Do you know how to read? How tall you are or whatever. They don't even ask about that. So the issue here, unfortunately, they don't teach us in school. In, in school, they want us to have good grades. And they don't care whether we understand or what. The issue is we need to pass our exam. So you see now? So this is what we miss in our education system. And uh, our <laughs> education system here, most of the Tanzanians, they have certificates. And ask them to talk. Ask them some questions. They will tell you, you know what? They didn't teach us in school. You see? So what is happening now? Once you are out of school, once you graduate, three months later, whatever you started, it become obsolete. And think of this scenario. Uh, if you go to this uh, National Board of Accountants and Auditors here, yeah, they call it NBAA, they teach people that uh, um, a house, house is an asset. That is how, why? Because it is a fixed thing, it is immovable. Whatever is immovable is an asset. That's what they teach. But in reality, an asset is something which puts money in your pocket. So this is a different definition. If you have a house and it doesn't put money in your pocket, you are losing it. And some of you, you are now sitting in your house. Do you have a tenant in your house? So you know what? You are losing money every year because at the end of the day, at the end of the year, you pay property tax to the government. You pay the rent rent to the municipal government, whatever. So you can see the house is taking away money from your pocket. So it's not an asset, it's a liability. So this is what is happening. That's why most of the employees, once they have salary, they go out and buy expensive stuff, thinking that uh, they look rich. Yeah, they drive big cars. They, on Friday, you find them somewhere spending money. But uh, you know what? The money they are spending is from the hard labor. It's from their salary. It's not from the asset. The asset should bring money in your pocket so you can go and spend. So all the rich people you know about out there, once they get the money, they invest their money, and whatever comes out from the asset, that's what they're going to spend. So it's a different scenario. So my friends, I'm trying to share, share with you so you can understand what does it take. And I'm not here to just give you theory. It's something which it can really change our lives. And uh, I've gone through this. You know what happens? You were born alone, yes. You came alone, yes. You didn't even know who was your parents until later. They say, oh, this is my mom. This is my dad. Now you have so many people around you. So this is how it starts. So the way the motor works, you start alone. It's like a tree. But later alone, you have uh, branches going around, going around. As I'm talking to you now, we have somebody in Canada now. And uh, it's already part of this scenario you can see on the screen. So you, go, you see now how it works? So you're in Africa, yes, but you might be earning money from all over the world. We don't need to go on strike. You know what, what employees do when they don't get paid enough? They go on strike. Let me ask you, how can you become rich by demand? Eh? It is our right. It's our salary. You know what? The issue is we, they don't pay you by attending in the office. What did you produce so they can earn that kind of money? You see? So this is the difference. So with this kind of model, uh, you become your own boss. You are in control. There is nothing to sell. You don't need to have office space. What you need is just you need a network. And this is what the rich people do. The rich people go out and build networks. The rest of us, we just go out and what? And collect certificates. So the way the model works, as I said, you start alone, but you end up with so many people around you all over the world. So we don't need to rush to go to America or Europe. We can stay where we are in Africa, whether in somewhere in the village, but you can still earn money because you are working with a team of people and people are talented than you. It doesn't matter uh, whether you have a degree or you don't have a degree, you may end up having so many people under you. So this is what, if you are looking for financial freedom, especially in this kind of world we live in now. So that's why we have this word called team. Team means together everyone achieves more. 
So this is just the beginning, but uh, there is more. Uh, with this model I've been sharing with you guys, uh, if you look on the screen, you can see you have employees on your left side, and just underneath you have uh, self-employed. So all these people on the left side, what they talk of is about security. You see? But on the right side, what these people talk about, they talk about financial freedom. So the issue is, how can we move from the left side to the right side? That's where you need it to shift your mind. You need to change your mind. You need to think of an entrepreneur. You need to acquire those skills. You need to find people to mentor you so that you can move right on your right side. But with this mode I have shared with you, it will help you to cross over very quickly because while you are still learning, you'll be earning money while you are learning. You know, how many years it takes to become a doctor? Here in Tanzania, it's like uh, after your high school, how many years that? You, pass, you add like seven years more. Even if you are doing your internship, they don't pay you money. But with this model, uh, recommendation marketing or they call it network marketing, what you do while you are learning, you are still acquiring some skills, you are being paid. So this is how, how it works. So within no time, you find yourself, you have created a huge, a huge network where you start earning money. I remember some years ago, uh, you know, I used to be an employee and I worked for 10 years. I was a custom officer. And let alone, I reached a point where I wasn't happy with what I was doing. So through ups and downs and ups and downs, I decided to quit my job. And I did all kind of stuff in, the, in between, but let alone, let alone, I found what I wanted. There is a saying that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. As I'm speaking to you now, uh, I've seen people who had nothing. Some of them started as students, but now they are earning over 25,000 USA dollar. I want you to think about it. If somebody from zero, in a period of three to five years, earning over $25,000 per month. You know how much that person is worth? If you are earning just $5,000 a month, just $5,000 a month, it is equivalent to having 1.2 million years old in the bank account. Think about that. So if this person is earning $25,000, how much money, if it was to deposit the money in the bank, the guy has? if the interest rate at the bank is 5%. I don't know if this thing is coming, <laughs> clicking in your mind. So the issue here is the time, it's your choice. How do you want to use your time? And unfortunately in Africa, we, we have time where eh? there is no hell in Africa. My friend, our days are numbered. Think of Jesus died at age 33 and when he was asked, and people keep saying that uh, he finished what he came to do at age 33, how old are you? If 33 is the benchmark, how many years do you still have to reach 33? And if you are above 33 like myself, it means it might be that uh, God has misplaced your name. You could have died long, long time ago. For some of you who are still under 33, how many years you have wasted? And how many years do you have to reach 33? So use your time wisely, you see? So use whatever second, each second should count. And how you use it, it's a matter of choice. So I'm sharing with you some of the books that can help you change your thinking so you can think as a successful person, so you can think as a rich person. These are the basics. If you're a Christian, this, I can say this is a Bible for success. If you're a Muslim, but this is a Quran for success. So make sure you get this book. If you don't have it, let me know. The issue is we have it in a soft copy, but you can also download this book from the YouTube. It's free. It's an audio. So if you are cooking, you are driving, you can play it in your car. So you need to read this thing over and over and over because there's a story of very rich people in, inside of it. What principles, eh? what, what did it take for them to be successful? So in the book, there is 13 principles. So you need to go through this. I've read this like 10 times. So this will really help you. And that's what I use it myself also to change my life. As I said, it's not easy, but yes, at the end of the day, you make it. This is another book I would recommend. Uh, it's like a, this, I call it like a small Bible as well. This is about how can you become the richest person, whatever you are. 
So the story is about the richest man in Babylon and what he did. So you need to read the small book. You can read it maybe within one hour for, for some of you who are first readers. But this is a must. You must have this book in your library. And this also can be downloaded from the YouTube. It's there free. What a wonderful world is this. You know, I don't need to buy this book. I can just that for free. My friend, there's never been time like this one. Oh, thank God I'm alive. Thank God I'm sharing with you. I'm giving you something which can really change your life. It's not just for yourself, for your entire family and society. And this is the third book also I will recommend. Uh, the issue is, if you want to make this successful, find a way to help many and uh, yours will come automatically. So you need to learn how you can influence people. Leadership is influence. You can't just go out and pushing people out. No, 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 no. Become valuable, people will be attracted to you. So this is uh, one of the favorite and best book that's ever written about how to influence people. So you need to know how to influence people. Even if you want to be a politician, you want to be a pastor, whoever, you need people around. So you need to know how to deal with people. At the same time, uh, I'm finishing now. There's a lot of challenges in this world. And the issue is, the issue is, are you willing to do what it takes to be successful? This is a very powerful word from the late uh, Martin Luther King Jr. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. As I said from the beginning, the world has changed. The issue is, are we ready to move forward ourselves? As I said, it's not easy, but it's worth whatever challenge you're going to go through. And there's nothing comes easy. Nothing comes easy. I remember when I was starting to do uh, this network marketing thing, there was no product in Tanzania. So I had to travel from here to Nairobi, Kenya in a bus. It also was 12 hours in the bus. I didn't have enough money to pay for the hotel. So I had to wait until it's after midnight. That's when I go to the hotel and pay whatever I used to pay and stay there for two nights. I assume now, what time is it now? So I had to wait until it's after midnight. That's how I started. That was 11 years ago. Thank God now I went through, I paid the price. Now, now the story has changed. So you need to understand that uh, we can be whoever we want. The issue is, are we willing to do what it takes? So, you, as you can see on the screen, uh, you can be whoever you want. Uh, maybe let me share with one of my friends here. We can talk to you a little bit so you can understand what does it mean. I recognize and embrace wealth building opportunities. All I have to do is ask for abundance and allow it. Every day is a wealthy day. I always get what I wish for. All resistance to pro that the world is prosperous. Prosperity is mine and I choose to live it. I have the power to attract money. I open to the flow of abundance in all areas of my life. I deserve to prosper in everything I do. I love the idea of having truly great joy in providing for my family and those that I love. I deserve to prosper. I absolutely attract abundance. I am skilled at creating assets that make me wealthy. Wealth and prosperity is circulating in my life. I always have enough money to fulfill my needs. Money, I am successful in every way. Money is flowing to me. I respect my abilities to generate wealth. My circumstances are changing and prosperity is flowing into my life. I believe the seeds of great wealth are inside me. Abundance is simply a way of life, and I live it. Each day is filled with endless expressions of abundance. Unlimited abundance is mine. 
I will always be prosperous. Today, I expand my awareness of the abundance around me. Abundance and prosperity are my birthright. Money is positive energy that takes care of my worldly needs and desires. I welcome abundance into my life. I am free to accumulate wealth. I enjoy sharing my wealth. So you guys, uh, this is what can really change the direction of your life. I don't know how many years you still have to live, but think of what you are doing right now. For how long you've been doing it, and how far it has taken you. With this mode I've just shared with you, if you can just take it serious, pay your dues, there's nothing for free. There's nothing for free. It doesn't matter how many times do you pray. If you don't put in action, and it's on, only through action, that's what the blessing is. You know, we need to go out there and touch people. And the more people we touch, whatever we aspire, whatever you are thinking to do this year and the years to come, God will bless you several times. Pay the price. No pain, no gain. If we don't touch people's lives, if we don't help other people to change their lives, we should forget it. You can make it at once, but the issue is, can you do it over and over and over? The house you see on the screen, we have people now. That is how they live now. They are born with nothing. That nothing like the situation you are in now. And some of them, they didn't even go to school. Some of them, they don't even know their parents. Think of, my friends, we can really change our lives if we can find a better way how to touch many. I know there are so many people out there, they have given up. People are running away from their countries. We have our young and children, brothers and sisters, they are doing drugs. You see, people are in robbery. They are doing all kinds of stuff. But there is a better way. The jobs, for some of you are looking for jobs, for some of you are still working, for how long will you keep working? You know what? The world has changed. I know you have family. What's going to happen if you die now? Just think about it. What kind of legacy do you want to live? How do you want to be remembered? You just want to be remembered that uh, you are on this earth, you just came here to, to pay whatever and disappear? You know what? It doesn't matter how many times do you pray. It doesn't matter how many times do you ask God to help you. If we can't find the right way to save money, whatever you're doing is wasted, will be wasted. And if it happens you die poor, you are not born to die poor. All of us were born to be successful. But thank God that we're still alive. This is the model. If we can embrace it, it can really change our lives. As I'm talking to you now, I have people all over, listen, I'm talking from Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, Africa. You know, this is the kind of thing you cannot even imagine that can happen. How can you sit in your living room and talk to the entire audience? I don't need to own a television set. I don't need to own an internet, whatever, but I can just use it. You know what? We don't build bridges. Some people build it. I don't need to buy an airplane, but I can fly over. So we can use this thing too, my friend. The issue is, if you have your full-time job, start using your part-time. The number of hours you spend watching football, eh? endless meetings, somebody's wedding, somebody's what, whatever, use that time. The number of time you use reading newspapers, you know, watching movie, watching football, Arsenal, Manchester, whatever. Do they know you? We can use this little time. Use it. So think about it. We are being blessed and highly favored, but we can use whatever time remaining, and at the end of the day, this I will be remembered. My friend, uh, I want to end my session now. I will also ask some of my friends who, or some of my colleagues who are on now online, uh, because you are supposed to finish our talk around uh, 11, 11.30, so we still have like 12 minutes. So 
whatever dream you have, you need to protect your dream. People will laugh at you. People will try to block you up. But you know what? There is God out there. You were created for a purpose. Think of why you came on this earth. Think of why you are still alive. There is something in you. And I'm sure you are hearing, you are hearing me now, not for, it's, it's, it's not an accident. There is something in. And I'm sure you got something out, out of this. So before I finish, uh, I want to end this session now. But uh, we are still online. I will be asking some of the guys who are online now to share something so that we can hear and to know each other. So you guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have you got something out of it. And please, make sure you share to your friends and your brothers and sisters. And uh, now I will ask somebody in. I have uh, Mabai. I don't know if you hear me, Mabai. Uh, Mabai, do you hear me? Leonard, Mabai. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Can you share? Hello? Yes, can you share something, please? Yeah. First of all, I really thank you for the meeting you have conducted with us. It was so much motivation and despair. So, actually, I, I, I've got something very vital and very crucial, very important, very valuable for my colleagues. I have a lot to do with it to transform my life and other people's life. Okay, tell me, professionally you are a doctor and now you are watching this. Why are you doing this? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I really, I'm watching this because I want to do a lot in my life. Being a doctor still yet, what I'm getting in my salary is not a, relatively enough for doing the things I really want to do in my life. I have a family, I have my children, I want them to go to school, I want to have a better lifestyle with my family. So depending on salary, I can't do anything. So doing this extra thing makes me enjoy, makes me feel that I I'm here in this world to do a lot for my family and the other people too. So I encourage other people to know that we we can think that sometimes we have a lot of excuses that being an employee, being a doctor, I don't have much time, whatever. But well, you can find today I I am able to be on this session. I can listen to the same time if there is no webinar meeting like this, I can use the social medias with the Facebook, WhatsApp, Skype. We can use all these, these opportunities, opportunities that we can use them to share with the people we know to make that they can also be part of this opportunity. So, we have time. It's, it's the matter of ourselves to decide and act immediately. So the time is always there, okay. regardless whatever whatever you have. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much. I have Jacinta Bale in Uganda. Jacinta, do you hear me? Can you say something from the webinar? Hello. Yes, Jacinta. Go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Shirato, for the presentation. We are so grateful to be our applying. And um, um, I'm advising all people who have been listening for this webinars to keep on going at least every Sunday. We shall, at the end of the day, we shall come up seriously in this business because I've done it seriously for five years. And uh, the main issue is about personal development. If we keep on listening to such trainings online and we also involve ourselves in doing it all the time, um, I know the business is going to move up seriously. Oh, okay, Jacinta, can you share with us uh, what made you decide to do network marketing? What made me decide to do network marketing? Yes. It's because I had struggled all along 
with my goals, especially the, the dreams that I had for my children because I'm a, I'm a parent, I'm a parent of, of five boys. And these children, all along, I wanted them to be in very good schools. And the jobs that I was doing could not help me to do that because first I was employed by, by the airline industry for eight years. From there, I went in the traditional business. I used to import uh, clothes from Dubai, Turkey, China, and all that never went, wrong, never went right. The goals could not, I could not achieve, the dreams that I had. So I decided to do network marketing uh, after using these products, and they really worked for me, for uh, this great company I'm working with, Forever Living. So when the product worked for me, I learned how the system worked, was, was supposed to be applied, and I started applying it myself. And it has really helped me to achieve my, my dreams for my children to be in good schools. Actually, in one of the best schools in Kampala, it is called Green Hill Academy. And we have already made a plan for them to go for international schools in their secondary education. And those school, uh, one of the great schools that we want them to be is two international school, which is in Nairobi. Very expensive, but cut us off this business that we are doing network marketing. I know we are going to achieve that. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jacinta. And then I have another of your colleague from Uganda. This is uh, Edida Namanya. I don't know if you are there. I can see you up that uh, your audio is not well connected. Edida, I wanted to hear from you. And then we have this uh, Abedayo Mwagama. Do you want to talk something, Abedayo Mwagama? I don't know where he is now. Uh, and then we have uh, Jessica Swai. Jessica Swai, are you there? Can you talk something, Jessica? There's something wrong with your audio. And then you are from Zadik Khan, Canada. Uh, can you share with us something? Zadik Khan, do you hear me? Hello, Zadik. You're online. Can you talk something, please? Oh, it's not there. And then I have uh, the brand new mother. This is Manaidi. Manaidi Cleo, can you say something? We have missed you for a while. Manaidi Cleo, can you talk something? Oh, she has a she has a baby. It's probably she's breastfeeding. And then we have Limoni Kiamiza. Oh, Manaidi, you wanna talk something? <laughs> Uh, hey, Monaidi, are you there? <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, now we have uh, Laimon Kamiza. Laimon Kamiza, do you hear me? Can you talk something? Laimon Kamiza, where are you? Oh, where are you? Uh, this another guy, Shalon Koba, where are you? Can you talk something? Okay, Umi, 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 Umi. Can you talk something? Umihawa. Oh, Umi, how are you get lost? So, you guys, Umi, can you speak something? I can see you. Hello? Yes, Umi, go ahead. Yes, uh, first of all, I would like to really thank you, Mr. Alphonse. I really enjoyed the session today. And I think uh, what I would like to say to whoever has been listening to the session is that we all have potentials in our lives. So we should, you know, get out of the fear and try to step up and uh, get out of our comfort zone so that we can be able to achieve our goals, okay? So if you think you have something you're good at or you think you can do something, don't like keep on postponing just do it when you can okay most of uh, the people especially youth we like to like we like to procrastinate we like to wait and wait and wait and wait till it's too late so what i can say is that um, we should take steps 
early in our lives. If you're a 20 year old person, then imagine if you start your business when you're 20 and uh, count 10 years or 15 years from then and just think about it where where you're going to be at that uh, point of time so i think uh, my advice to uh, to whoever is uh, listening is that we should all um try to uh, get out of our comfort zone and try to learn new things uh, ask help from people who uh, have done it and and uh, we will we will succeed on whatever we want to to do that's it okay tell us you are the universe of Dalai Salam. how do you balance your time study and then now business how do you balance Did they teach you network marketing in your school or what um no they don't teach us uh, network marketing uh, but you know myself um I believe that we all have enough time, you know, 24 hours in a day is more than enough time. You have, uh, personally, I, I would uh, spend maybe six, seven hours a day on my studies and a few hours, maybe three hours to spend time with my family and friends and a couple of hours I would spend on my business, maybe two hours tops per day so to me it's very uh, it works for me you know I can really balance my time my time very well so how do you see yourself in the next three years um, I'm very excited because I think the future is very bright for me I mean counting three years from from now I, I see very big things in my life and I am really, really grateful that I was introduced into this business. Okay, Umi Hawa, thank you very much. And that's we come to the end of our session. I hope to see you next time. Remember, we have another session. It will be in Swahili on next Tuesday. So make sure you register. We'll be uh, sending uh, all the links tomorrow so that you can prepare yourself. It will be in Swahili. So thank you very much, Jacinta and uh, from Uganda, uh, Eunice, Elaston Purple, Edida, Jessica, Dr. Mabai, Mzadi Kani from Canada, Manaidi Cleo, we missed you, Lemony Kiamiza, Shalokoba, Awes. Thank you very much, guys, and good night.